Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal them myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Holy and loving God, write a message on our hearts. Bless us, direct us, and send us out living letters of the word. Amen. Please be seated. Certainty. I have been pondering certainty this week. Certainty is such a subjective proposition. Why are we certain about some things and uncertain about others? Why are others so certain about some things while we are so very uncertain? And why are others so bafflingly uncertain when we are so very certain? And how, because of our experience or external events, does our certainty evolve. Let's put a, a pin in that ponderance for a moment. In today's first reading from the book of Acts, Paul is in Athens. No, not the one in Georgia, the one in Greece, one of the greatest, if not the great city of the capital, capital W West. Athens is the birthplace of so many disciplines that undergird our civilization, democracy, philosophy, and literature. Athens gave us thinkers like Plato and Aristotle and Herodotus, the father of history. Theater and architecture would look radically different without Athens. And unlike many outposts of human civilization where survival was not a certainty, in Athens, people were privileged to gather to debate public policy or consider the ultimate truths. Pericles, an Athenian of the 5th century BC, once remarked, our whole city is an education, for our citizens excel all in versatility, resourcefulness, and brilliance. I bet he was a scream at parties. <laughs> now, one would think that such brilliant people would have everything figured out, from the ordering of the natural world to the best way to organize human civilization to the very nature of God. One would have to assume that such an accomplished society would have been certain that they knew all there was to know about the universe. But maybe, just maybe, these Athenians were not so certain. For today, we read in Acts about our friend Paul, a learned man in his own right, a Pharisee, a Roman citizen, and a disciple of Christ. He arrives in Athens to preach the good news. And in Athens, Paul finds the temple to the agnostos theos, the unknown God. Athenians were pagans, primarily worshiping the 12 Olympians. But there was also a 13th God they would worship, the unknown God, the ultimate covering of one's spiritual posterior. And Athenians worshiped this unknown God to ensure they were right 
with whoever was running the show in case their gods turned out to be false. And this means that the Athenians, despite all of their uh, intellectual achievements, they were as uncertain as the rest of us. Perhaps this was a sign of great wisdom, a personification of the old adage that the first step towards wisdom is admitting that you know nothing. Or perhaps this is an example of ancient cynicism. But regardless, upon reading this reading from Acts, I have been pondering certainty. For we, like the Athenians, we also love to be certain. We need to be certain. We need to look like we are certain. This goes here, and that goes there, and this means that, and this means that, and they are good, and they are evil, all organized in their respective boxes, everything in their modern and understandable place. But if we are honest with ourselves and risk being a little vulnerable, we admit that, like in Athens, all is a facade. We go into the doctor's examination room and we wonder if it will be a good number or a bad number. The phone rings at an odd hour and we wonder if it will be good news or bad news. We turn on the television and we scream, why? or something else I can't say in mixed company, and we have to turn it off after two minutes. And of course, this universal struggle for certainty was thrown completely upside down three years and 103 days ago by COVID-19. Today, the virus is still with us, but as of last week, May 11th, the federal emergency declarations have expired. This is not the forum to discuss the correctness of our collective response, nor am I qualified to evaluate our response, but this milestone does merit some reflection. In March of 2020, in a world that was already frightened, COVID took our collective anxiety to a whole other level. And no one seemed to know the best way that the virus could be prevented, how long the outbreak would last, and how dangerous an infection could actually be. In my previous parish, at one point, we bought this antibacterial fogger that we would use to spray the pews in all public places. And it may have provided some modicum of safety, but it also made our sexton look like some kind of antiviral ghostbuster as they wandered up and down the aisles spraying anything that would stand still. In all seriousness, many folks tried their best, and so many responded with real heroism. But the pandemic was, if I dare use the past tense, it was a time of unprecedented uncertainty. And uncertainty will continue. Our uncertainty in the future may be about something other than a terrible and mercurial disease. But if we are honest with ourselves, we will always be uncertain about something. Now, I could end the sermon there, and we would all move on to the creed and spend the rest of this delightful Mother's Day slightly depressed. Or, or we could put an asterisk next to our uncertainty and entertain the possibility that there is an answer to our doubt and our struggle. And while it may seem simple or obvious, it is also true. In today's gospel, Jesus says, You know God because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. 
In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Abide is one of my favorite words. Uncertainty may visit, fear might haunt, but genuine love and care and relationship, they abide. And they abide with us forever. And nothing can separate us from the one who abides. For the apostles were anxious and uncertain too. After Jesus' dynamic earthly ministry, after the drama that was Holy Week, after the universe changing miracle that was Easter, the apostles knew in their hearts that Jesus was about to leave, about to ascend into heaven. But Jesus tells his friends and us that despite of our uncertainty, no matter what life may throw at us, in the face of all of our fears and grief, conscious or unconscious, God is with us and God will never abandon us. No matter what tasks or challenges or callings this world might put in our path, God's love and presence is real and certain now and forever. For our God is not unknown. Instead, God abides with each and every one of us. And that above all things. I am quite certain.